is my biggest empty so far. Biggest dollar value. We're smashing records here. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Karina and welcome back to my channel. As you guys can see by this overflowing box, I've got stuff in front of me. I got empties. And boy do I have empties for July. Kind of my cutoff at this point is after it's panning cats and dogs, those updates go up on the 22nd. So all of the empties to that point from the last month to then were got them here. We've got a little bit of hair care, but we've got nail polish, we got body care, we got skin care, and just a little bit of makeup. There's not much makeup this particular month. But the body care and the skin care, oh my goodness, the value, the value, you guys. But before we dive into the regular empties, we're going to start off with a bonus empty, which should have been featured last month, but I forgot about it because it was in a different spot. Bonus empties are those that do not count towards my yearly value because of the nature of the product. And in this case, we're talking about a tool, or in this case, a makeup blending sponge. Just one of these guys. So it's been a very, you can see all the ripping going on here. And it's not clean because I'm just going to throw it out. I was using this one for quite a while, but this sponge is quite exciting because it came in this set. I have used these ones all up. And this I picked up from BoxyCharm. I think this cost me four or five dollars USD. I think this is from M2U NYC. So we had, you know, all of these cute little animals. Not on the actual sponge, just the outer packaging. But all four of these have now been used up. It took me quite a while to go through them. But this is done and it's out of my collection. Let's get into the makeup empties proper. All right, there's a lot of stuff in front of me. Let's start off with the one-off. This is my one and only hair care item. This was in Beauty A to Z. This is the Garnier Fructis. This is their damage repairing treat papaya extract one minute hair mask. Um, I used it like that. Uh, it is, of course, empty because this is an empty video. I was originally using this as a like leave in hair mask after the shower to kind of try to condition stuff, hydrate, all of that good stuff. But I felt like it weighed my hair down. So when I got to this point, it only started there in the project and then this I had used as that leave in before. Hair down, I just used it as a conditioner just to get it done. And it was fine as a conditioner. Of course, you could use it in a multitude of ways. Best thing about this though, oh, is that scent? Oh, it's so good. But I do not think I would repurchase it again. It's really, am I a hair mask person? No. And it's kind of expensive to do conditioner like this. So that is my one and only hair care empty. Let's do nail polish next because I've got four empties. So exciting. Uh, let's start with this little guy here, which I loved. Uh, this is Quo by Orly. So this doesn't exist anymore. Now it's Quo Beauty. They have their own line. Beautiful, sparkly red color. The swatch looks like this. Absolutely adore this. And I kept it for so long, even though there was like nothing left in here. I'd repurchase if I could. I'm sure I've got dupes in my collection, but this was a beautiful polish. The Never Settling Polish. This is Sephora Color Hit in Cookie Break. Uh, lines, of course, for Project Polish were right there. Uh, the first... One, that didn't take me long to make, that was one use. That took me forever, and then that was pretty quick. And we've got our swatch of it right there for us. So a really nice, like it's still a nude, but it's got a little bit of color to it. When I repurchase Sephora Color Hits though, like they are $7, which for a five milliliter bottle, it's a little, a little ridiculous. From Leo Reese, can't afford it all. This is, of course, an expensive brand. I only buy these and I buy them. I mean, they come with your pedicure at just for your day spot or your manicure. Um, I did well. I kind of went crazy on this particular polish. Very beautiful, summery kind of color. So I did enjoy it, although I do wish there was a little bit more to it than just the matte, or at least just the cream finish. And the last nail polish used up, Sally Hansen Insta Dry in Jet Setter. Um, this is where it was. I used it all in one month, 
and the polish is sitting as you can kind of see right down here so we got i worked it down really really far very pleased with it but yeah very oh gosh stringy and goopy at this particular point i did not get sick of it i enjoyed this it does stain though so that makes me hesitant to want to repurchase this color and formula but Maybe if you know of similar colors that don't stain the nails, let me know. And then of course that was the swatch of it right there. So great summer pick. Normally I save my makeup to the end, but uh, I only have three makeup items to talk about. So let's just talk about them now. Uh, two of them are lip products. So starting off with this guy. This is the Maybelline Baby Lips Moisturizing Lip Gloss in the shade 45 Coral Craze. Um, Lots of windowing in there, and again, I don't take the stoppers, I love products. Crazy old, but I still got like 45 uses out of it, I think, within the project, and it had been used a bit before that. So, I don't know if you can even repurchase these, but I don't know if I'm a big lip gloss person, because I feel like it doesn't stay on the lips. So for that reason, no. This was the other... A lip product I finished up, also Maybelline, unintentional. Um, this is the Maybelline Color Blur. This is their cream matte pencil and smudger. I believe these are discontinued. You do have a smudger on the side, which I didn't use a whole lot, but I did try it out. And then you had the color right there. Um, as you guys can see, it's all the way. Like I can't get any more in there. And anything just scrapes the lips at this point. This one. I feel like it wasn't very long lasting. Another color I have that I'm currently working on is. So I don't know if this was just too nude or just the color just didn't seem to be there or what it was, but I wasn't a big fan of this color. I used it up just to get it done because I had it. So that goal is now met. And the last item I finished was a mascara, which was briefly featured in This Is Fantasy. Of course, the classic L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara in the water proof version. Normally I don't buy waterproof but as I talked about in that project I wanted it for when we were down in the Caribbean on a dolphin swim day because yes I still wear at least a little bit of makeup because my lashes without mascara are not very good. I do have a non-waterproof version in my collection already. Um, so I am willing to try it. I didn't like it at first, but as I started to use it more, I did enjoy it. And again, I'm more curious in the non-waterproof formula. So after you go through that tube, then I'll be able to really tell you if I would purchase this again. But really, if I'm going to buy mascara, it's going to be drugstore. Otherwise, I just get a lot of boxy charm. Okay, let's move into a transitional kind of piece here because I'm not really sure where these fit. They did come to me via boxy charm, and these are some masks these are from pop mask this is their sleepover five self-warming scented steam mask with soothing rose scent uh these are about a 30 minute mask but they lasted so much longer than that nice heat to them um as it says here on the box good for migraines tension headaches dry eyes and sleep problems as someone who suffers from chronic headaches mm, mm, I don't think I'd agree with those claims. I do, at least for me, I prefer cold on my eyes compared to heat. I mean, they were nice. I used them up, but I'm not going to repurchase. They came to me in boxy charms, so it's not like I was going to purchase them anyway. But they were nice, and the, like, the little straps um, that go all around behind your ear were actually quite comfortable. You could sleep on your side or lay down on your side with this on, so that was quite nice. And then the rose scent was actually not bad. Usually a lot of rose scents, like don't get me wrong, roses are my favorite flower. And a natural rose scent is so good. But most products is like this gross rose and I don't like it. But this wasn't bad. This was a decent scent, especially because I was worried that the scent would further trigger a headache, which it didn't do, which was great. But still, 20 bucks USD for this box. Nah. Nah. No. Let's do body care next. And guys, we're going to start off with a hands. It's been a little while since one of these was featured. This is from Life brand, so the Shoppers Rec Mart brand, pomegranate and mango, just a basic moisturizing hand soap. Uh, 340 milliliters. 
Now, pomegranate mango, as you'll see in a little bit further, um, this used to be my favorite scent for hand soap and body wash. And I do say used to because I am just head over heels with Bath & Body Works right now. I am trying to transition fully over to Bath & Body Works soaps. Um, I do have another of these sitting downstairs in my basement, but that bathroom really doesn't get a lot of use, so uh, it might be a little while before that gets used up. But it's just a basic hand soap. You can kind of see some of it down there, but obviously straw doesn't reach it, and I don't care too much about it. But I've just purchased so many of these and use them particularly in body wash formats that the scent I'm kind of done with and I just want to play with Bath & Body Works. So although it's a fine soap and if you're looking for a basic soap, like these go on sale for like $2.99 all the time, but that's also a price you can get Bath & Body Works soaps for. So, sometimes. I did just do a Bath & Body Works haul for hand soap. Check it out. I was able to get those for $3 between the $3.75 event plus a 20% off coupon. So really, this on sale versus those on sale, I'll take the Bath & Body Works. While we're talking about pomegranate mango, let's go with the soft soap. Uh, juicy pomegranate and mango with real fruit extracts, moisturizing body wash, 591 milliliters. This took quite a while to go through because there's so much product. And again, I'm a little tired of it, which is unfortunate because I have an Costco has these packs, which are great. You get two of these and you get two of the exfoliating coconut body soaps. But again, I want to switch over to Bath & Body Works. So I, I got to work through another of these. But this was the one. Like, this was my favorite for so long. And it still smells good. Don't get me wrong. Just I've used it for so long. And I do want to go into Bath & Body Works, play with different scents. But if you like pomegranate and you like mango, it's a good one. Let's talk sunscreen next. Um, you guys haven't seen much sunscreen in my empties yet. Have you seen any? You've seen one, I think. Um, because this is a month we finished off four. Four SPFs. So let's talk about them. Let's start with this one. This is the one I, I think you guys have seen before because this was finished off right after the Caribbean cruise. This is the Neutrogena Mineral Ultra Sheer uh, Dry Touch Face and Body Stick SPF 50. Again, SPF 50 is kind of like my thing. Like if it's not SPF 50, I don't think I want it because if I'm using sunscreen at all, it's got to be up there. Um, this is my third or fourth of these. These are good. I do like them. I do like the stick format. Uh, you do get 42 grams in here. It basically works like a deodorant, but as of course you just saw, when you get towards the bottom, these start popping out. And you can see like really used that down. I'll shove it in there like that for now. Um, and then you do get a little bit stuck up in the lid, which isn't the best. This, I think my favorite way to use these is over my makeup because it doesn't really disturb the makeup underneath and you can get some SPF for reapplications. Also great for applying on the body. So I do like this. Let's go with this one next. This is the, what is this? Little Joey Australian Gold Sensitive Sun Protection SPF 50. Um, as I talked about after the Caribbean vacation, we ran out of sunscreen in the Caribbean, halfway through the cruise. So we had to buy some more and this is the one we bought. So. Was it ridiculously expensive because it was on a cruise ship? Yes, it was, but you need your SPF. And this was actually quite nice. Um, this is good for sensitive skin. It is fragrance-free, which whatever, I prefer fragrance anyway. Vegan, cruelty-free. Uh, it's water-resistant for 80 minutes, which is good down the Caribbean. And yeah, it's the basic classic sunscreen scent. We used this guy up, finished it relatively recently. But the Hawaiian Tropic one that I've hauled recently, mm, I like that one. And it's got a nice fragrance. So also SPF 50 plus, which is maybe better than this. What's the difference between 50 and 50 plus? I'll have to do some research. But I would prefer to buy Hawaiian Tropic over this guy. And then we used up two of these Neutrogena, the Ultra Sheer Dry Touch. This is their sunscreen SPF 60, so very nice. Uh, I do believe these are designed to be like a face sunscreen because they are only 88 milliliters. Um, did use it a little bit on the face, 
but also primarily on the body. Um, because we're just kind of starting to figure out, like, we're being much better now about our SPF. Because we did burn a little bit down the Caribbean, especially my husband. Um, whoops. Issue of not applying and reapplying enough. Um, so as we're learning how much SPF we go through, especially with walking the dogs, right? That's a lot of sub. I had bought a four pack of these from Costco for $29.99 Canadian. Uh, these individually, if you were to buy them at like Shoppers Drug Mart, these retail for like 20 bucks each. So uh, Costco was the way to go. But we did use two of these in a month. Plus finished off that one, which had just a little bit left, plus the, the stick. So we chewed through it. But it was nice. I did like it. Um, this was very smooth. It absorbed easily. It was great. But again, just it's price point. Because again, these are more face, I think, compared to body. You can use them on the body. That's what we did. But yeah, pretty good. Have two of these left. You'll see them eventually. And that brings us into body lotions and moisturization categories. No Bath and Body Works, unfortunately. Let's start with the one that is technically not a body lotion. And that is this guy here from Cora's. This is their Superdose Probiotics Greek Yogurt Mask. I am not going to open it again because I hate the scent of it. Um, I don't like yogurt. I like it in things. So like in a smoothie, for example. Great, I love yogurt there. But I don't like the taste of yogurt on its own. I don't like the smell of yogurt. And this, because it, again, one of their big claims is uh, the highest concentration of Greek yogurt ever. Ooh. And I think my face reacted. I don't know if that was just psychological because you know the scent of the Greek yogurt or if there was something in here that my face did not like. So I ended up using the rest of this in Skin Is In as a body moisturization product. And of course that went very quickly. It wasn't the most easily absorbed in there and we still had that scent. So do not recommend this product unless you really love Greek yogurt. Also use this very expensive little guy up. This is from Lancome. This is the Lano Trezor, Trezor. Oh, French, never claimed to be proficient in it. Um, this is their precious perfumed body lotion that I used up. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you can see the packaging is broken, which uh, made it harder to try to use that up. Uh, the scent was just okay, right? And again, for something like this, like it's all about the scent, uh, but I had received this as a gift. So I used it up. It was fine enough. Would not purchase this especially at the price tag for it. Oh my goodness. But it's done. And it was, it wasn't like a bad moisturizer. Like it moisturized, but I don't think it was enough. So if this was like your all the time body moisturization product, I think you need a little bit more, at least for my skin. Speaking of broken packaging, this one from Miss Panning Cats and Dogs, which I rolled in for Willow because she ate the top off. So... Uh, this is from Dove. This is their Body Love Pampering Care Body Lotion Shea Butter. Um, there's your straw. I had basically decanted as much as I could out of this into another tub to use it up to make it easier to use once we got about halfway through it. Um, I tended to use this paired with the bio oil because this has a very light scent because it's just the Shea Butter. Um, and then because it was in a project and I wanted to make sure it was done for that round, I did use it on its own as well. And it was fine. I enjoyed it. It absorbed well. It had a nice light scent. But Bath & Body Works. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bath & Body Works. This does have 400 milliliters, which obviously is more than Bath & Body Works. So price point is still better, but I want the scents. And finally... Uh, this is a new one for you guys here on YouTube. Although if you are caught up on Ready, Set, Pant Instagram where we do some behind the scenes stuff, then you're going to recognize this body lotion. This is old. This is easily 15 years old because this was purchased at the Gales Warehouse in Winnipeg forever ago. This is from Beauty and Bath. This is their Floral Noir Body Lotion in Blue Lavender Nightfall. Um, 400 milliliters in here. There are no scent notes and it was just okay. I'm not a big floral person. I don't know why I bought this. Um, but I have it and it's been used up. 
Uh, how I would get this used up is if, you know, someone was over and they wanted some body with, like, a hand cream or something. It's like, hey, use some of this. Or the main way we got through this is any time my husband and I would kind of do, like, a spa night. It was like, yes, massage body lotion into me, please. Or onto me. This is the one I gave him. <laughs> because, you know, if I'm enjoying a nice massage anyway, we might as well use a lotion that's just okay. Um, so that's how we mainly got because formula is fine. It's just the scent. It is very much, you know, older lady is where I kind of go with it. But and I'm not big on lavender. But this is done and has been around for way too long. And now for our last category, let's move in to the face. So all of your skincare there. Uh, a lot of this, of course, you have seen in projects. So we're going to start off with this little guy from Beauty A to Z, the Pixie Glow Mud Cleanser. Those were my progress marks. I loved this. I am so glad I have a full size already in back stock. And I don't know, the scent is like, it's herbally, but it's clean and like spa-y and it's just very nice. It caught me completely off guard. Loved this. And once I work through the full size, I'll be able to give you guys a more like, okay, is this something I'm going to repurchase? Because it's at this point, I, I think I would. And it, it takes a lot, especially for a cleanser, to make its way onto the repurchase list. Another boxy charm item. So the Koa Life Mist Me Rejuvenating Toner. Um, I went through this entire 30, yeah, the entire 30 milliliter bottle in just over a month using it once a day in the morning. Um, not great. Uh, the sprayer was fine. Ugh, can't get anything out there. Um, it was fine. Like, it says you're supposed to spray this one to three spritz. One to three spritz does like nothing. You have to use like six. So that's probably part of the reason why this went so fast for me. But Again, the spray was nice, the product was fine, not interested in repurchasing, and this was my first experience with the brand, so it's like, eh. Let's move into masks now. So starting off with the sheet mask. First up, this one from Glam Glow, the Eye Boost Reviving Eye Mask. This was a 20 minute mask. I had it on for longer, it was fine. I do feel like it may have burned slash irritated like over in this region just a little bit. So, again, it was only the one, so I wasn't sure if that was psychological or not. It did have this very superhero, supervillain kind of appearance to it. So that was kind of fun, but these are way too expensive. So this came in BoxyCharm, so glad I used it, but would not repurchase for that price tag. Same thing with this box. Um, you saw me use one of these up and skin is in. I used the other two behind the scenes because this was a pack of three sheet masks from Vita Square. This is their probiotic repair. Um cranberry and apple sheet mask and um you know they were fine they were a sheet mask i'm not a big sheet mask person as you guys know if i'm going to purchase them myself they're generally on clear out for like a dollar or less so i use them but not 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 so big on them and these are kind of expensive when you break it down but what i would potentially actually repurchase is this one this is from Life Brand. This is a moisturizing foot mask. Uh, this particular one is shea butter and coconut oil, so not much of a scent to it. Um, you did have, you know, your little pair of socks here. And I have had this and one other one for so long, like years, because it's like, oh, it's this whole big thing. Like, you're not supposed to walk on them, obviously, because your feet are in lotion and it's slippery and all of that, so safety hazard. But the thing is, I use this when my feet were kind of going through a rough patch, right? With it being summer, right? You're around the house barefoot a lot. You're wearing sandals. Your feet are exposed to outdoors. You know, I was getting some blisters. I was getting some cracking. I was getting all those nasty feet things you don't want. So I use this. And it 
made such a difference. So unlike the hand mask from OK, which I use, which when I was using it, I was like, this is great. But the next day I'm like, oh, the benefits are gone. This is awesome because there was a long term benefit for my skin. And so like my feet were so much better, so much softer. Like this was fantastic. These are kind of pricey. I think they're like $4.99 regular. Often they go on sale like two for $8, which is still more than I would want to pay, I think. But because they were so effective, like maybe I would purchase some of these. So yeah, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. And I, I, I mean, might be one of these kind of girls. Now again, I am curious about the difference between using something like this versus using like a very moisturizing body lotion, putting your own socks on, having it absorb. So I may experiment a little bit with that, but for now it's like this, nice. In the terms of the masks that are not on the sheet form, we have two of them. So starting off with this one from Pixie, the Vitamin C Caviar Balm. This is a leave-on mask. So you just put it on, it absorbs into your skin, has a lovely citrus scent. I did enjoy it. I didn't notice enough with this product though. So definitely the Glow Mud Cleanser way outshined this particular product, but it was fine while I had it. And of course, there was my usage. The other one is a much more recent into my collection mask. This is from Ren Skincare. This is their glycolic lactic radiance renewal mask with AHA in it. For those of you who caught, because I was tiny a little bit there. Um, for those of you who caught my uh, birthday haul, which was at the end of May, um, this came in a Sephora favorites kit, but it kind of leaked all over inside the kit. So although this was a 15 milliliter sample, I probably had only half of it in here. And because this was technically open, because you know, it spilled everywhere, I want to just prioritize get this used up. And it was fine. So it's got kind of a, a thickness to the scent. Like the scent is sweet, but it's very thick. And again, that's because the mask itself is. And it was a fine mask. I didn't notice enough of a difference, but that's okay. It was decent, but it was also kind of on the expensive side. Okay, let's do serums next. I have three little sample ones to discuss for you guys. Let's start with the ones I would use during the day. So the more recent one I used up, Glow Recipe, the Niacinamide Dew Drops. Love these. This is the second sample I have used up. Um, like the scent. Very nice, light, gel, refreshing, lovely, great. Um, I do already have, what do I have in my collection? I've got a full size of this. I've got, this came in like the birthday gift this year, right? So a birthday gift sample of that. It came in the fruit babies, a sample of, I've, I'm stocked on this guy. The serum that I think is probably most suited for my skin is the glow recipe this is the guava vitamin c dark spot serum um i don't know what i felt about the scent i felt like i didn't really have a scent um maybe i don't know what guava smells like that could be a thing but again that vitamin c serum I wanted to integrate more of that into my routine i've got serums and backstock ready to go as soon as i can use up some other day serums i liked this i used it for about a week week and a half with this five milliliter sample. Did I notice any crazy differences? No, because I was only a week, but um, I do have a full size of this as well that I got for Christmas. This serum. I'm gonna try not to rant about it too much because I kind of complained about it on Instagram. I already complained about it in It's Panning Cats and Dogs, but this is the Shandy, Shandy? Shani Darden, the Retinol Reform Serum. This serum is fine, okay? It's fine, it's there. Problem though is the packaging. As I showed you guys already, this top has no straws. So you cannot pump it out. This is obviously hard. You cannot get it out unless you do a little tiny skincare spatula, which I did, pulled out everything I could. Now, what I didn't know about this back when I did it's panning cats and dogs in that update. I, cause I do all my price figuring out for the empties video. So you guys, 
Again, this is my first experience with the brand, so this is not a good first experience. So this is supposed to be like a retinol alternative, supposed to be not as harsh, but here's my issue, you guys, besides the packaging, which was really, really not good. Um, the full size of this is 30 milliliters for your whole face. And it retails for 88 USD. Again, being a Canadian girl, it's $88 on its own is very ridiculously expensive. And when you do the conversion, it becomes even worse. So when you do the conversion from USD to Canadian, and you also like go from 30 milliliters for that price tag to the five milliliter sample here, this was almost 20 Canadian dollars. The product, even on its own, if I try to eliminate all the other factors, forget it. Let's move on to some other things now. Uh, eye products. I finally used them up. So this one, of course, was from Skin Is In. This comes to us from the Better Eye Company. This is their Eye Bright Now Anti-Puff Anti-Dark Circle Serum. Puffiness isn't a problem for me usually. It's not a rare occasion. But the dark circles are. Progress lines are here. I don't know if I noticed that much of a difference, honestly. So I've been using other stuff since then. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Would I repurchase? No, probably not. But at least in terms of the whole like oil serum dropper system thing, that wasn't as annoying as I thought it would be. It was fine. Just, just it was fine. And I have finally used up an eye cream. This has been open for forever. This is the Mary Kay. This is the Time Wise. Their Age Minimized 3D Eye Cream. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Um, it's all empty. I am at a point where I don't think I really want to buy eye creams. You could just use your moisturizers for the most part. Like, I'm sure there are some eye creams for some people that do honestly make a difference and all of that. Great. For me, I get enough of them in BoxyCharm. I'll just use what I get in BoxyCharm. So, not really gonna, I don't anticipate planning on repurchasing this guy. Lasted a very long time though. Like, oh my goodness. And the last category in here is moisturizers. So I have a bunch of them. Uh, let's start with uh, this one, which I also did not like. This is from JLo Beauty. This is that Blockbuster Wonder Cream. And uh, I did not like the scent of this. Um, maybe it's the olive oil. I know that olive oil is pretty heavily featured in her line. And uh, yeah, there's my progress lines. I'll put it this way so you can actually see with that glare, but Based on this, not really interested in stuff from the brand. Another philosophy sample. So this one is the Nature in a Jar Sika Complex Recovery Moisturizer. Tended to use it at night. It was fine. Got it done. Oh, this one. This is the Pharmacy Honey Halo Ultra Hydrating Ceramide Moisturizer. So it just had nine. What was this? Nine milliliters in here. It is completely done. Used up. The scent, I couldn't do it. I don't think I like the scent of honey. So for the scent alone, I would not repurchase this. I did not enjoy my experience with this. But the formula was so good. Like I, this is, it's a, it's a richer, thicker, deeper, hydrating kind of serum. So I would use this at night. I don't think I'd recommend it for the day. But if you want more of that rich, deep hydration, this is a good one. Go for it. I just can't do the scent, which ugh, a little heartbreaking. The full size moisturizer I was using during the day. This is from Tarte. This is their hydrating drink of H2O. It was a lightweight gel kind of moisturizer, light blue color. Had a bit of a scent, don't know what that is. It was fine. Would not repurchase though, because it wasn't like anything absolutely crazy. And finally, if we want crazy, let's talk about price tags for Strivectin. Uh, Strivectin is up there in its price tag. This one on its own, when you get to Canadian and all of that, this is $129, which is a huge chunk already of my empties value for this month. So, 130 bucks right here. This is from Strivectin. This is their Advanced Night Retinal Moisturizer. Um, it was 
kind of yellowy looking. Didn't smell the best, but it always had that scent. This originally I was using, you know, as my, if I'm just going to slap some moisturizer on, I've got a headache, just get it done. Or I did try to finish it up in Project Pan. It, it only took me about a month because there wasn't much left in here. It didn't take me just about that whole month though. This is expensive. As I mentioned, um, starting back to in general, I don't think I would buy anything from them, but the products I've tried, I've liked, but it's not the full experience. I want things to also smell good. This doesn't smell good, but I do think that they are effective. So it's kind of a give and take with Trifectin. Those are all of the empties. Now, again, not the biggest in terms of spilling over in the box for any given month. But as I've already told you guys, this is my most expensive month yet. In part because, you know, in terms of the body moisturization products, I did use a face mask as a body moisturizer. I had like a fragrance lotion, which was very expensive as well. Um, I had four SPFs. That's like hundred bucks right there between all of the different ones. So there was a lot going on and get all the little skincare samples. Oh my gosh, when you're doing the math and doing the conversion, it's like, those are so, so expensive. Man, those values rack up quickly. So to wrap us up, this table here in Canadian dollars is worth the highest total so far by a fairly decent margin of $759.33. My goodness, when I do all that math, I am so glad I am not paying retail value for all of that stuff. Again, I shop sales, I get stuff in BoxyCharm. It's like, oh, man. Because that brings my yearly total to $3,360.20. My goodness, my goodness, that, every time I do this in preparation for the empties, my mind is boggled. It is crazy how expensive all of this stuff is. And again, it depends on the brand, it depends on all of that stuff, but at least I am using it up. I'm getting opinions formed on things and I'm purchasing what I really want with my own money. So that is gonna wrap up this crazy insane month of empties because the previous big one was like 500 some dollars so we're like 200 bucks over the previous one so we'll see what happens next month we'll see what happens next month but i am anticipating we're probably going to hit like five grand by the end of the year which is absolutely insane now again this does include december so it's gonna be 13 months of empties by the time we get to the end but what a journey you guys but that's going to complete today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed MT's videos and the mini reviews along the way. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video very soon. Have a wonderful day.